friends this is Lucretia from burning up the roads and I wanted to talk to you about something pretty important that's going on in my community right now and actually probably across the whole of the west um, at one level or another um, as the uh, as it says right here Oregon's wildfire season is one especially dangerous weekend ahead I'm going to start off with sharing um, a scene here and what it is, um, Oregon's wildfire season has one especially dangerous weekend ahead. For a case of Oregon's wildfire damage, turn to local newspapers, of course. So uh, this talks about, um, we've had a very limited wildfire season. Um, as wildfires go in, in Oregon and the Pacific Northwest. We've not had a tremendous amount of, of fires. And I was actually last just last month going, oh man, we have the one in Southern Oregon, which which is a which is a pain, really, really severe pain. But at least it is not like 2020 was or 2017, when I believe that's when Richard had his knees replaced and I went to visit him at his rehabilitation facility one day. And the smoke was so thick, I could barely see the uh, road that was no more than 75 feet from where I was standing. And the fire was not even, it was relatively far away. It was within about 30 miles, but it was completely smogging up, fogging up uh, the whole of the uh, valley here. Um, so right now it says 19 active fires in Oregon have burned 1,727 acres. The largest of these, the Double Creek Fire, has burned 53,000 acres, 539 acres, near the Snake River Canyon on the state's furthest northeast corner. It is entirely uncontained. Near the California border, fire crews are finally getting a handle on the Rum Creek Fire. Uh, the Rum Creek Fire is the fire that you see in the background of my uh, page here. And I'm going to pull that up just so you can get a better view of exactly what that looks like. It's, it's terrifying. So for me, it's a terrifying thought that... Um, Uh, it's right here. It is the Rum Creek Fire, or Red Rum as they're calling it, in Josephine County. And it's right on the river. I, I can only fathom what the fear must be like for the people who have had to run from this fire. So um, what the article says is that, um, doo -doo -doo, we talked about that already. High temperatures. The problem is, so what my understanding is why this weekend is especially bad is because the conditions here in the valley and in much of western and east, um, central eastern, central western Oregon is that there are high winds coming in and they have, uh, they have what they're doing is it's similar to what happens uh, in California when they have the the uh, the fires or uh, the wind and the fires down there where there is an extreme influx of wind that um, fans the wildfires. Officials warn the conditions are are aligning for a similar disaster here. High temperatures and high temperatures and dry conditions have left much of the West Coast vulnerable to disaster. An hour south of Oregon border is the California town of Weed. I remember we went through weed and snow when we went to Quartzsite a year and a half ago. A wildfire burned more than 100 homes and destroyed a historically black neighborhood founded in the 1920s. Oregon officials warn that conditions are aligning for a similar disaster. 
here. The gusting winds are expected this Friday and Saturday, but still potential for rapid fire spread. So that's important to understand is rapid fire spread. And where I live here in Eugene, let me get rid of this. Uh, where I live here in Eugene, the, just to, I, I live in a flat section of, of town. And um, it's no hills where I live, but just to the south of me um, and to the east, actually much closer from the east, uh, to the south it's about 14 miles to the other side of town. So the further side of town from where I live is about 14 miles. <clears throat> and, it, and because I have to go through traffic, through town, it takes about a good 40 minutes to get to what's called our most southern Eugene border, which is the South Hills, part of the South Hills. And um, it, we've never in my 60 years, to my knowledge, had a major fire in our South Hills. Nor have we had one just east of us, which is the, I'm gonna pull this up here. I'm gonna pull up the red flag warning from uh, National Weather Service. What it says is urgent fire weather message um, and moderate to strong east wind and low humidity expected Friday through Saturday. A strong area of low pressure along the Oregon and California coast will bring moderate to strong east winds along with the critically dry conditions the Northwest Oregon and Southwest Washington through Saturday. Um, where it's going to be real problematic is the North Coast Range, um, East Slopes of Central Oregon, Coast Range, um, and the Willamette Valley. Extreme South Washington Cascades and Foothills. Okay, then down here a little further, red flag warning remains in effect until 11 p.m. Saturday for winds, uh, relative low humidity. I live in the Central Willamette Valley. There's also concern for areas of Washington. Winds, 10 to 20 miles per hour with gusts up to 35 miles per hour. And it was very eerie today to see, um, to see this happening. And I saw it firsthand. Um, east wind 15 to 25 with gusts as high as 45 miles per hour can be expected near the west end of Columbia Gorge and Oregon Coast Range. There's relative, our humidity is about 15%. Um, air quality is horrible. It's recommended that people with lung condition, well, nobody should be outside, especially jogging, um, doing any kind of sports right now, walking. And that's, I did a little video earlier, and it's eerily quiet outside right now. I live in a neighborhood where there's neighbors all around, and it's very quiet. So um, air, air quality advisory is in effect until 10 a.m. Saturday. And by the way, it talks about the burning eyes. Pollutants and smoke can cause burning eyes, which I've got. Um, runny nose, I've had a little bit. Um, it will aggra aggravate lung and heart disease and other serious health problems. So limiting outdoor activities, keeping children indoors, um, and follow med medical advice. All right, so moving forward, I'm going to share a little bit about my immediate area. So off to my, my east, there is overlooking Interstate 5. You can't see it, but it is right down in here. Um, and the camera keeps moving. Actually, I believe that's Interstate 5. It's a really small line. I believe that's Interstate 5. And this up here is called Buck Mountain. And my nephew, his ranch is just on the other side of Buck Mountain. And uh, the pictures from up there are just phenomenal, I think. The, um, the cloud of smoke, that is a very real cloud of smoke. That is exactly what we were seeing, Richard and I were seeing today. We had to go run a couple of errands and uh, 
when we were coming back, we were at a certain location where we were coming from way over here. And I could see that bank of smoke clouds. And I'm like, Richard, where can we get the best picture of that? So um, this is what we're contending with right now, is this horrible uh, smoke inundated valley right now. All right. So um, another another issue um, that we're we're concerned about is that I'm going to show you the current fire map. All right. So um, this is a really cool site. Um, one of our the the newspaper that's up in Salem, which is our state capital up here. I live right here, right over in here. Uh, <laughs> uh, the uh, Statesman Journal uh, has a, um, a magazine called Oregon Live and online. And we can find out lots of information from that, Oregon Live. So this is a picture, so to speak, of some of the larger fires in Oregon right now. This is the one that's really affecting us and this one down here. This and this, and then there's some smaller ones here. A bunch in northeastern Oregon. Look at that. We have actually, the governor has called in backup fire people for this weekend because of this huge wind issue combined with low humidity and um, uh, high temperatures. It was 90, um, 90 some today. Tomorrow, it's going to be 99, 98, 99. So I will be definitely, um, we will be keeping a watch for anything that happens around here. It, it can happen. Like I said, on the, the outskirts of Eugene at the, the southernmost boundary down here is, um, is the Southeast Hills. And we've never had a major fire up there. All I could say is, as, as everybody prays to God, that never happens. All right, so we have, <clears throat> They're setting up some areas uh, for people to be able to hang out at during the day from about 8 a.m. until 10 p.m. And as a matter of fact, I know that they have been set up. All right, immediately, so one of the ways they're handling this is they are stopping, um, they are shutting down the grid. Shutting down the grid. Did I say they're shutting down the grid? We have several different utilities in Oregon. I live um, under the utility um, Eugene Water and Electric Board. There's also um, Emerald People's Utility District, and there's a couple of others. Right now, currently, right now, currently, this outline is where the most current shutdown of grid is happening in Lane County. County, that's the county that I live in. Um, This is a possibility. So this particular outline is the next possibility. But currently they have shut down this grid. This grid could happen at any time as could we. Now we will get notified. I talked with my utility today. I asked them, will you tell us before you do it? And they said they would. 
They said they, as a matter of fact, they knew this was going to happen yesterday because this is where so much of the wind is coming from. And this is so, just woods. This is just nothing but, but timber. Um, whoops. Uh, let's see. Small towns and timber. Another major area is coming out of Highway 58 down here. As a matter of fact, let's see if I can, uh, it's not going to work for me on this one. So that's what we're up against right now is grid, grid going down. And we all have had concerns about that happening. And here we're in a situation where it's actually happening. All right. I found this. Here's something that I found. I found very interesting. So, in my conversation today with a young man from Eugene Water and Electric Board, and by the way, he was super nice, very nice young man. We had a very good conversation. Um, we were talking about, you know, this whole issue of getting contacted, making sure that uh, we'll have prior notice. And he said, yes, they always do that. <clears throat> So this is it right here. So here's something interesting. Let me back up and see if there's. So it talks about the eWeb um, outage map. And um, this is emergency. Uh, it's called emergency. Emergencies. Um, wildfire mitigation plans. So here's kind of what he was alluding to. Um, EWEB's Board of Commissioners approved, let me start and highlight this. EWEB's Board of Commissioners approved the utility's first wildfire mitigation plan during the July 5th board meeting, which is astounding to me. The first. And we have had massively bad wildfire seasons. Uh, the plan is designed to protect public safety, reduce risk to utility customers, and promote electrical system resilience to wildfire damage. And here's what, what it says about what that means. We already have numerous well-established programs in place for grid reliability and safety that support wildfire risk mitigation. Our new wildfire mitigation plan meets the legislative requirements for Oregon Electric Utilities to develop risk-based wildfire mitigation plans and adopts more rigorous standards and industry's best practices. These include annual vegetation management and equipment inspections in areas of higher wildfire risk. EWEB also has established, uh, has also established procedures that make the electric system more sensitive during fire weather events so that it quickly trips offline to reduce risk. So, Here's one of the things they're doing. So apparently, let me just preface this is a couple of years ago, there was um, massive fire east of here and um, including friends of mine um, that are within, uh, within 30 miles as a crow flies, their town where my father grew up in Marcola, Oregon, got had to evacuate there was places east of that that um burned down towns whole areas along the river burned to the ground similar to what happened in um there was a small town in california that that happened to a year or two ago as well so they got sued they got sued by people who lost everything for not being able to shut off the grid sooner or for not having shut off the grid sooner. Um, so proactive grid hardening investments. We proactively seek opportunities to replace older equipment, such as power poles, cross arms and wires. In some cases, we take certain overhead distribution lines and put them underground. So mostly back here in my area, it's all underground. Although we still have uh, the boxes that if, uh, can go bad that are outside of my immediate area and affect me. Fire resistant equipment, such as using um, duct 
ductile iron instead of wooden poles in a recently completed transmission line project in the upper Mackenzie Valley, which is uh, a really, it's a beautiful place. The Mackenzie River, beautiful place. Uh, situational, Situational wildfire season awareness. Situational awareness um, includes monitoring weather for high winds and low humidity, modifying field work practices to be more fire aware, bringing fire suppression equipment to every work site, and increase coordination with public safety partners when crews are working in areas with high fuel loads. So there was going to be road work done east of here, not too far, and it's being put off now for two weeks. And rightfully so, we can live with that. Um, working on alert fire camera on a communications tower to spot small fires before they threaten communities and infrastructure in the upper McKinsey River Valley, which is where there is a tremendous amount of forest and where we had a wildfire two years ago, just blew it out, just burned it down. I went, Richard and I drove through there and did a video and I was, I was awestruck at the amount of damage done. Um, eWeb's communications tower that provides radio communication for eWeb. Um, Carmen Smith hydroelectric project provides a live feed viewable to anyone. Alert Wildfire is a project led by the universities, including Oregon Hazards Lab at the University of Oregon. Woo, go Ducks! to provide cameras and wild, they need some help, in wildlands that can help firefighters discover, monitor, and contain wildfires. Power line protective measures. When weather conditions indicate there is a high risk of wildfire, we change the protective settings in our equipment in South Eugene and McKenzie Valley. These protective measures include modifying high voltage electric switches and relays. Who knew? Just like a circuit breaker in your home, the switch senses the trouble when the trouble occurs, such as a tree branch falling on the ground on the line, and shuts off the power. We will not re-energize the line until we visually inspect and confirm the public safety partners there is no fire in the area. And red flag warnings, like what they've done with us through the weather service. So I appreciate the work that they're doing. I. Uh, I don't think too much can be done. We have lost too much to these wildfires, including in Southern Oregon, and I did, I cried my eyes out, a young man who was based out of Colorado uh, back in the, back in June, I believe it was, uh, he died working on one of our, our wildfire down by California. I don't know why I did this, you know, that's south, you know, <laughs> I'm looking north. Not actually, I'm looking east. This is due east. Um, no, he passed. Um, he was killed doing his job for the state of Oregon to help us with a fire. And uh, he was based out of Colorado. And I believe his family is from Wisconsin, Michigan, somewhere in there. All right, stop sharing. I don't want this to be a forever video. But there is some things I, I did want to make sure that we shared. Okay. Um, here's one of the, those things. All right. I think most people, I was raised by a fireman. My father um, was a fireman and while he did not necessarily fight wildfire, uh, occasionally there were fires and uh, that were grass fires, you know, and and he would have to go fight them and, and help put them out. Um, he was a battalion chief when he retired, uh, but definitely I was raised with fire awareness and fire concern. And my, my poor little sister is just absolutely terrified of fire. So I, we actually have a sister right here in this area, right here, whose grid is on a different um, power company. 
I believe it's EPUD, Emerald People's Utility District, and it is down. They they turned it off at about five o'clock tonight. So this is where I live. This is Eugene. And this is where uh, right now they're kind of like building a firewall. The, the, the um, a large fire is over here, just east of Oak Ridge, and they have um, lost a lot there. And so they are working very, very hard to stop it. And so right here, we couldn't, if we went to Oak Ridge, we could not get past Oak Ridge right now because they have shut the road down. That is, that is Highway 58. It goes between Eugene and, um, well, you can get anywhere in Eastern Oregon. Um, but generally speaking, this goes more Southern. Uh, up here is where it goes to Bend, right there. But you can go, if you really wanted to take the long route, the scenic Sunday drive. You could do this. Go way down here and drive way up there. So um, that is where there is they're 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 just really working hard to stop the fire that's in this this vicinity. And I believe that is uh, there's Diamond Peak. See, look at that. Look at all of that. I'm gonna pull that up here. That is just beautiful wilderness. I mean, I just, I love Oregon's natural beauty. I am not a fan of our government, but I will not go further than that right now because that ain't what this is all about. Um, we have a beautiful, we have a beautiful state and, and I'm grateful. I'm grateful that we've been this blessed and more than likely, some of this won't be standing at the end of this fire season. Um, but this is why they're working so hard. One of the reasons they're working so hard uh, is to stop that. It affects animals. It affects uh, homes and people's livelihoods. It affects uh, uh, travel. One of the roads from a few years ago is still shut down and it's a very major route east. All right. I just want to make sure that there was nothing else that I was leaving behind here. That, my friends, is what's going on in the Willamette Valley. Um, we are fighting for our virtual life, so to speak, as far as fires go. Um, I, I feel, I feel very safe. I did sign up for all the alerts that are even remotely possible. Um, and, uh, if we have any issues or concerns, we'll get notified. If there's a fart crossways, I will get a notification and, um, we will, you know, we'll be fine. But again, we live, we live in an area where there is a lot of, um, a lot of green beauty and I don't want to see it gone. And I'll leave you with one last picture from, oh, Buck Mountain, the mountain that I had showed you in the beginning, that's right above I-5. That looks over again, over I-5, that is a, a bank of, of smoke, fog, smoke, smoke, um, whatever you want to call it. And it is blanketing the Willamette Valley. And we are, um, we meaning the state and the people that it is tasked with creating a fire break around us are working hard to ensure that there is no damage done to um, as few people, a few as few buildings, and as few square miles of gorgeous Oregon beauty as possible. All right, so with that, I think I will let you um, off the hook now, and thank you so much for watching. I appreciate
I appreciate it. If you found something about this interesting or that somebody else might be able to use, I'd appreciate you sharing it. And, and I'd love it if you'd give me a thumbs up. I really would. It, it matters on my, um, uh, uh, with, with YouTube. And I do plan on um, being back here soon. I hope you guys are all safe and that your city and your town is not at risk of wildfires. And uh, know that we love you, we care for you, stay safe, stay healthy.